At Laura's place, Spencer has picked up Ace from the Invader's daycare a bit early given it's his mom's first day on the job. Laura watches and says they are so adorable together, but reminds him their guests are coming soon. Spencer knows it's for the reading of Victor's will, which Ace doesn't need to be subjected to. Laura takes Ace to put him down as Trina calls Spencer to check on him and the will. Spencer says the reading hasn't started and he asks about her DNA tests. She hasn't received them yet. They agree to check in with one another soon. Ava and Alexis arrive, and Alexis hasn't been looking forward to this. Ava has, and sings she loves hearing Victor is not only dead, he's most truly and sincerely dead. Victor's attorney arrives with a briefcase, followed by Martin, who's standing proxy for Valentin. He relays Anna is on her way, but the lawyer can't wait. Martin recognizes Victor's attorney, calling him a legend in the field. The attorney opens the briefcase, which has a video screen inside. The reading begins as Victor appears on the screen. He says if they are watching this, they survived, and his attempt to better the world failed. He hopes his bequests provide them comfort as civilization continues to crumble around them. To Ava, while she waits for Nicholas to return, he leaves a rendering of her first true love. The lawyer hands her a photo of a gargoyle. They all laugh over it. To Alexis, Victor leaves a Russian nesting doll that dates back to the time of the Romanovs. He says that represents family and specifically her daughters. She's shocked as this is actually nice. To Sam, he leaves a deck of very rare tarot cards to hopefully help make herself lucky in love one day. Alexis comments, and there's Victor the monster. To his granddaughter, Charlotte, Victor leaves a necklace with the Cassidine crest to remind her of who she is and one day who she'll become. To Valentin, his traitorous son, he leaves a satchel with a rare antiquity from Greece. It contains the last piece of an ancient statue of the majestic sun god Apollo on Earth on Cassidine Island. Martin opens it, and it's a middle finger. Laura can't help but laugh. Alexis and Martin decide to depart, and Ava says all that's left is Spencer. The video continues, and Spencer is left a small white box, which Victor says is about safeguarding the future of the family. At the hospital, Sunny asks Michael how Willow is doing. He says she's getting her first treatment now. Sunny thinks Willow will need a lot of support and asks if they can put grievances aside and stick together for Willow's sake. Michael agrees as Willow is all that matters. Michael goes to check on her, and Joss gets a text from Trina who is downstairs. Joss takes off, and Sunny tells Carly it's clear Michael and Joss couldn't get away from him fast enough. Sunny tells Carly that she can go, and he'll wait for word on Willow, but Carly offers to stay with him. He asks if she's heard anything from the SEC. She hasn't, and Sunny warns she'll probably hear from the DOG soon. He says he has Diane working on Robert to find out if he knows anything. She thanks him just as Michael returns and asks what his mom is thanking Sunny for. Elsewhere, Joss and Trina catch up about their troubles. Joss tells her Willow is undergoing her treatment, and Trina notes she won't let these DNA results change her life. She says her dad will always be her dad, Curtis she's come to respect and love, and her mom will be her mom, even if she doesn't trust her the same way. They realize they only have two more days in the dorm together. They sit down, and Trina isn't sure she's ready to move home with the DNA results hanging over her head. Joss has an idea and invites Trina to move in with her. Joss is certain her mom will agree. Trina says there is something she needs to know, and fills her in on Dex and Spencer's latest fight, and that Spencer can't seem to help himself when it comes to Dex. Joss says Dex has a lot more going on than to worry about Spencer. Joss has to get back to her family, and they wish each other well. Once alone, Trina gets a text. Meanwhile, Carly tells Michael he need not worry about her, but Michael asks if there is something to worry about. Sunny tells Michael there is something he needs to know, and that he and Nina got engaged. Michael's not surprised, and Sunny assures him it will still be Willow's choice to let Nina in her or the kids' lives. Sunny heads off, and Michael assumes his mother knew about this. She did, 
and he asks if there is something else going on. Carly fesses up that there is a rumor the SEC and feds will drop the insider trading charges if she gives up Sunny. Michael asks if she'll take the deal. She tells him that he knows better than that. Joss walks in and hears them discussing the deal. Michael says if this deal is legit. Joss butts in and asks what her mom is waiting for and to take the deal. At Portia and Curtis' place, Marshall asks Portia to taste test his gumbo, which she says is perfect. Just then, Curtis arrives with a bag. Marshall offers to take the bag to the guest room and says he's surprising him with his special gumbo, a dinner just for him and Portia. Alone, Curtis asks about Trina. Portia says the spring semester is ending, and she's shown no intentions of moving back home. Curtis says he came home, so maybe she will too. The doorbell rings and Portia is hopeful it's Trina, but it's Aunt Stella. Marshall comes downstairs and Stella can see they had no idea she was back and thinks she should go. Curtis says Stella is always welcome, and Portia agrees. Stella is glad to see them together. Marshall decides to set the table for four instead of two, a family dinner, and Curtis tells Stella she might as well settle in. Stella says she didn't come all this way to give up on her family, and neither should they, and love is always worth fighting for suddenly. Curtis gets a call from Trina, who is at the hospital, and says the DNA results are in. Diane and Robert run into one another at the Metro Court. Robert was just looking for her, and she says she was thinking about him as well. He assumes she heard the news, and she says she has. He wishes he had told her, but she doesn't understand why and asks what he's talking about. He says Holly left town and wonders what is she talking about. At the bar, Olivia rants to Olivia that the feds can't use Carly against Sonny as it's not fair now that Carly doesn't have spousal immunity. Olivia says there must be a way to keep Sonny from taking the fall. Nana says they both know Carly would never turn on Sonny. Nina suggests that leaves Carly and Drew, and if one might turn on the other. Olivia refuses to believe that, so Nina suggests there is a way to find out, and they look over at Robert and Diane talking. Nina suggests she could use her friendship with Robert to find out what is going on, pointing out that after all, her husband is caught up in all of this. Back at Robert and Holly's table, Diane says never mind what she's talking about and asks why Holly left town. Robert explains it is to help Ethan, and she's likely not returning. Suddenly, Olivia interrupts to ask Robert if it's true that there is a deal being offered for Carly to give up Sonny. Diane asks Robert if there is any truth to this. Robert says they aren't playing by the rules. Diane tells Robert if he stays silent, then that's all the confirmation they need. Robert says, what I can say is, he gets up and walks off. Diane asks if Olivia got the answer she needed. Elsewhere, Nina gets a call from Sonny, who gives her an update on Willow. He also says he told Michael about their engagement. Diane finds Robert at the bar and says she was only doing her job back there. He asks why she always must be right. She says she thought she was but she also thought he and Holly were right for one another. She asks what happened between them. Robert says life happened, and what she said about them not being able to make it work all those years was right. Diane expresses she's sorry. Robert tells her next time she wants to pump him for information, make an appointment with his office. He takes off. At the Quartermain mansion, Sam drops by with Scout for a sleepover with Drew. Drew has a gift for Scout her brother Oscar's harmonica, which he thinks he would have wanted her to have. Scout tells her dad she loves him, and they hug. Scout goes outside to play the harmonica for the birds. Drew and Sam's talk turns to the SEC charges, and Drew notes Ned has the clout to make these charges go away. Sam says if she needs him to dig up dirt on Ned then just ask. He needs her to stay out of this because Scout will need her if he goes to prison. Later, Olivia enters with Scout, who she found giving a concert in the gardens. Sam heads out, and Scout takes off to the kitchen for a brownie. Olivia lets Drew know she has information he needs to hear.